Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Michelle's Cafe Clinic number nine. I can't believe that I'm almost done with this amazing project. It's been a really long journey for me, and there's only two more clinics that I'm going to be hosting tonight, obviously, and on December 1st, I'm going to be hosting the very last clinic of Michelle's Cafe, which is going to be about how to take advantage of opportunities and create opportunities for yourself rather than just waiting for them. But tonight, we're going to talk about confidence. Confidence in caps. I feel like one of the things that I hear about myself over and over again from people that I meet, people that I meet for the first time or people that just know me, is that I'm a very confident person. And I take a lot of pride in that. Um, but what people really don't know is that I'm mostly externally confident. And what people don't really realize is that there's two types of of confident and there's two ways to really demonstrate your confidence um, and I really want for this clinic to be a little bit more of a conversation base so to break off the ice I would love if anybody here can maybe say what are some things that you personally consider to be good demonstration of confidence for people um like when you're speaking to them you feel like you look directly at them so like instead yeah, of like yeah. looking elsewhere Excellent. Eye contact. Eye contact is a huge demonstration of confidence because if I'm not really confident, I'm going to look down probably. Uh, I would say posture or just your over, uh, overall way of carrying yourself. Definitely. Definitely. That was going to be my first uh, point was posture. There's really uh, two types of confidence. As I said, external confidence which is kind of like what other people perceive of you and how you're presenting your personality to be confident or non-confident to others. But there's also internal confidence, and that's kind of like how you feel about your ability to accomplish certain tasks successfully and how much of confidence do you have in yourself. So my confidence is definitely something that, as I said, I've been practicing for a very young age. I kind of like the spotlight. Um, I love public speaking. I really flourish when I have the attention. Um, I love meeting new people and leaving a really good impression on them to, to be like, have people think that I'm special and that I, that I'm confident or like leaving that wow effect of like, oh, wow, that person is really like happy and cheerful and confident. And um, I wasn't born with it, obviously. I was shy growing up. I kind of like establish it with the years. So I feel like I can tell you a little bit about how I established my confidence and what are some things that you can do. Obviously, if you're here, then you want to establish your confidence. So let's talk about external confidence first, because believe it or not, that's the easiest part about establishing your overall confidence. Um, the idea of fake it till you make it, that's the one. So if you're showing to others that you're confident, if others think that you're confident, eventually you will become confident and you will believe that you are confident. So the very first thing, and a couple of you have already said it, is body language. Body language, when you're thinking about confident, is the first thing that you want to establish about yourself. So good posture, like I said, my first point, the fact that I'm having my shoulders down and I'm bringing my chest up is already showing you and demonstrating to you that person is carrying himself well, that person has confidence. It would be a lot different if I would be like this. If I would stand like this, and this is how most people stand, you know, like this is totally normal, like people just, you know, they're standing like this. There's nothing special about it, but there's already such a huge difference in the deliverables of how I'm communicating between this and this. When I'm talking like this, when my chest is open, when my, my posture is fixed, I demonstrate a lot more credibility and correct me if I'm wrong. So I am 5'7", and most people think that I'm a little bit taller. And that's also always because I'm making sure that when I'm walking and when I am carrying myself, I have my shoulders down, I have my chest open, and I have good posture. So it's very, very important. The second thing, and this is a good reminder to everybody, is to smile. Smiling will not only make you feel better, but it will make others 
feel more comfortable around you. Imagine a person that has really good postures and a smile. You'll be envision somebody that is very self-confident. So when you're smiling, you look like you have everything under control, like you're content, like you are friendly. And people are more likely to have good perception of you and are more likely even to approach you when you're smiling in comparison to when you're not. So when we're nervous, especially, we forget to smile. We're just so like stressed and we're fixed in our posture and we, we just don't do that very simple thing of smiling. For those of you who don't know, I am a swimmer. I'm a competitive swimmer. I swim for Stony Brook University swimming team. And for my national team, I'm Israeli originally. And one tip that I got when I was a young swimmer from like a more senior swimmer was before I take my marks, before I dive in the water to my race, I should smile. Nobody's gonna see it. You know, I have my head down, but if I smile, I'm kind of like signaling to my body, everything's okay. Everything's under control. And all of a sudden, it's a boost of confidence just from smiling. So that's a good reminder to everybody. Another thing that I think is demonstrating a lot of confidence is what we American call cleaning up. So for some, it would be styling your hair. For some, it would be dressing nicely. For some, it would be doing your makeup. I just finished uploading my how I do my makeup for a job interview, clinic number uh, seven to uh, the Stony Brook YouTube channel. So if you want to check it, that out, you're more than welcome to. But whatever those little things that you do to, that help you feel confident. So before every clinic that I have, and this is clinic number nine, I've always like took an hour to put my makeup on, to feel good about myself because it makes a huge difference. And it's one of the things that like, one of the tips that people give for job interviews on the phone is to still dress up as if you are walking in the office. Because when you feel confident and then when you're cleaned up, you are much more likely to demonstrate that confidence through your voice as well. So definitely a huge recommendation for everybody here. Another great tip, and this was something that I wish somebody told me when I was younger. Sometimes when you're purchasing a new outfit, you feel like shy to walk in it because you don't want to drag too much attention. So a really good tip that I can recommend is to practice wearing that dress or wearing that outfit or whatever business outfit that you bought in-house. Just practice it, wear it, and then you will kind of warm up to it and you will feel a lot more comfortable to head out, conquer the whatever it is that you have to do and leave a really good impression. The next thing is to be relaxed. Obviously, when people are relaxed, they demonstrate a lot more confidence rather than people that are very, very nervous and they're maybe speaking really fast and you can tell they're like maybe sweating a little bit and they're not like, whoa, 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 like calm down. Everything's okay. Everything's under control. And specifically on your body posture, when you are sitting, and this is a good reminder for women because I know that men don't have a problem with it, but when you sit really tight like that, um, you are signaling that you are nervous, that you're not confident. So you want to sit asymmetrically, which we women are normally not told to, which means that you like tilting your body a little bit, maybe opening a gap a little bit between your, your hip like that. You don't want to sit super symmetrical and super small. You want to take a little bit more space. And it actually helps you relax when you do that. Obviously, not in a way that is uh, preventing from somebody else to sit next to you if you're like laying like that, but when you do it, it, it is helpful. And you can see also when I'm speaking to you, when I'm like that, and I'm going to speak about confidence and I'm very like up, uptight and like maybe a little bit nervous rather than talking like that. And all of a sudden I feel already a lot more relaxed and I can talk about whatever it is and I... I feel better when I'm sitting like that. So those little tips, they make a huge difference. And when you're standing, again, don't stand like with both feet together. You wanna have a gap between your legs of at least your shoulder width. 
And men are a lot better at doing that than women because women are being told all, all the time by society that we need to be small. We need to take less space. And it's not necessarily true. And it is not recommended when you're trying to kind of like show that you have a lot of confidence. So these two things. When you are walking around the room, whether you're presenting, you are talking in front of a group, in front of a class, or just, you know, you're at a conference and you want to really show others that you're a confident person, try to move very freely. So like I said, there's a difference from where, from how freely you're moving around the room on how people are going to look at you and decide whether or not you're a confident person. So if I'm moving in a way that I feel relaxed and I'm carrying myself in like, um, I own this room almost, not like in a, not in a bad way, but kind of like, maybe you remind yourself that like, I'm the boss of whatever it is that's in here. And have that confidence to remind yourself that you have the upper hand, even if that's not true, maybe one day you will be the boss of everybody in the room when you're walking in, you know, you're in wise in women in science and engineering honors program for a reason, not because you're not good at what you do. So it is definitely an option that is more than likely to happen. Um, and next is something that I personally struggle a little bit with and that's staying non-reactive. So to show that you're not pressured by situations around you, that whatever it is, whatever news that you just heard, you're staying non-reactive, almost like not, it doesn't budge you at all. Um, so it shows that you're confident of the situation and sometimes not reacting is the most powerful thing that you can do. Um, and it's to show, as I said, that you're not controlled by your emotions. And when I read this in the research that I did for this clinic, the first thing that popped in my head was my military experience. So for those of you who don't know, in Israel, my country, uh, there is a two-year mandatory service in the military. And in the military, obviously, the leaders and commanders of groups, and it's such a huge organization, they have to be very non-reactive. So sometimes they're like emergency situations, not like anything too crazy, but sometimes things fall apart or need a, an immediate reaction and action. And I've been present in situations where you got the phone call that this thing just fell apart or you, you got the news in person. And I was amazed by how they were so non-reactive to it. Like if, did you just like hear what he just said? Did, did you get the news? Like, and they say like, oh, okay, get back to work. That's it. Obviously acting on it, like picking up the phone and creating whatever it is that you need to do to solve that issue. But by staying very in control of the situation, they demonstrated so much confidence. It was like unbelievable. So sometimes taking that pause and not reacting when you hear something, when you are told something, to show that you are not driven by your emotional emotions, that is definitely always a recipe for being unrational, is better. Um, obviously, it's specifically, especially important in times of crisis, um, when you're leading some sort of a big organization, you can't be led by your emotions. So this is everything for body language. Uh, the next one is communication. Communication, very important. Your number one key to demonstrating that you're confident. So this came as a surprise to me because I speak pretty fast, but you want to pause more often. <laughs> it is better for you when to pause because it is better, as I said, for decision-making. And it also demonstrates in your presentation of communication that you have a better perspective of things. And research so shows that speaking slower make you seem more confident and talking, taking more time to respond not only allows you to think of the best answer, but is also making you look more confident. So this is something that I need to remind to myself that if there's a difference between when me, I'm talking like that, blah, 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 and when then I am taking the time to talk 
to seem more confident with what I say. There's a different uh, pace to the tone of the things that I say. A fun fact is um, time feels faster when you are stressed. So most people rush uh, and give themselves only 30% of the time they give someone else to respond. So if I would get an, a question from the audience right now, and I was like, oh, wow, like you really put me on the spot. I don't know the answer. I need a little bit of time to think about it. So I might have taken 10 seconds to think of an answer. And during 10 whole seconds, I'm being silent. You ladies might not be as rushed as, as, uh, as you would for yourself. And you might be like, oh, that's completely fine. She's taking the time to think about the best answer. But in my head, it would be, oh, my God, it's been more than three seconds. What's wrong with you? Like, give an answer. And by that, I'm only stressing myself out more than what I would if I would ask somebody here in the audience a question and they would take 10 seconds to answer. I only give myself, we only give ourselves 30 seconds of what we give somebody else. So let's extend that gratitude and that skill to, to ourselves as well because we'll only generate better answers and we'll show our confidence a lot more. Um, another part I think is very relevant with communication right now don't try to convince others or impose your opinions. So when you are coming across a situation where you and somebody else don't have the same opinions or you're in a negotiation or you are in even an argument or in a conflict, it might sound weird to you to think about the fact that you don't want to convince them with pressure because when we think about salespeople, and they are con convincing you to do something or to buy something, we think about them as very confident. But actually, there's a difference between being a confident, persuasive person that is just based on his communication style, his credibility, and persuasive, rather than being that person that is pressuring and convincing you on purpose to think in a certain way or to do something specific. There's a difference between like having that trait and skill rather than doing it like aggressively. So make yourself an equal partner in the negotiation. And I think it's a really good reminder for everybody nowadays. And sometimes I'm really disappointed that people forget that just because you have a different opinion doesn't mean that you're worth less than me. I feel like after the election, it was such a battle on social media between the blue and the red and it doesn't matter what you chose and it was obviously like pretty close so like it's it wasn't like a 90 percent 10 percent situation people have different ideas why I, I i i'm puzzled by this why do people feel so strongly to persuade and to give their opinion in such an aggressive manner to one side or the other side why like it People are so aggressive on it when it only reduces your credibility and reduces your confidence when you're trying to do it in that manner. So when, if you think about it, when we decide if we want to associate ourselves with somebody else, um, we think about how much does this person want or need us and how much would I enjoy a communication with that person? So if I see somebody that is so aggressively pushing on towards one idea, do you think I would want to communicate with him? No. I would just walk away. I will not embrace in any communication with him. Which brings me to my next point. Walk away if the relationship is not mutual. Don't ever be that person that is one on a one-side relationship. You have the confidence to just say, okay, you don't see my value. Thank you so much and walk away. Don't stay. You really don't have to. There's no reason to. On the other hand, don't walk away in an emotional, like, turbulence in like a tendrum of like, oh my God, you don't understand anything. Goodbye. And walk away. Because that reduces your confidence level. Because um, it shows, again, that you're acting on emotions. The last part when it comes to external con uh, confidence is belief. 
And belief kind of ties into internal confidence as well. So belief, the belief, and this is one thing that I really want you to really inhale in and understand and take in and live by it. The belief that no matter what, I will be okay. No matter if I'll get rejected, I will be okay. No matter if I won't find a job on my first month out of college, or even the first year, I will be okay. No matter if my relationship will fall apart, I will be okay. And I know that for fact, for any single one of you, you're way stronger than you think you are and when you give credit to yourself for it. That's the deepest layer of confidence that you can establish for yourself. And it is not about looking cool. It is not about always saying the right thing. And it's not even about getting other people to respond to you. It is about you living your best life knowing that no matter what, you will be okay. And if you can, if you can really embrace it, then it doesn't matter how hard the truth is. And it doesn't matter if it makes you feel weak. When you stop feeling like you always need to say the right thing, you will stop worrying about that someone else might reject you because you will never reject you. You will never reject you. And tell that to yourself. I will never reject me. And if you're currently facing a failure, and we're talking about failure in a little bit, um, I really encourage you to either meet with me or watch clinic number four that I posted about the battle's not over until you win. I talk all about goals and setting goals and feeling like a failure and how to rebound from it. So internal confidence is a lot harder to establish because you can't fake it. What is internal confidence? According to Dr. Ivan Joseph, it's the ability or the belief to believe in yourself to accomplish any task, no matter the odds, no matter the difficulty, no matter the adversity. The belief that you can accomplish is self-confidence. So many stories that we hear today about successful people, confident people, it's like a crazy fairy tale story, overnight success, but they are not. They never, it is not, it doesn't happen. Overnight success, it's not a thing. And it is so easy to believe that it is because we only hear about those people when they succeed, when they become rich and famous is when we hear about them. Because obviously the media is not going to cover when they failed for 10 years. <laughs> so you have to remember that behind every success, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of failures and a really long process and falling on your face several times. And I really want to include a few examples. And I want you to think about examples also. If you would like to share, I would love to hear it. We all know Harry Potter. Even if you don't watch the movie or read the books, Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling, the author, took her book, Harry Potter, in 1993 to 12 publishing companies. 12 companies said no. 12 companies. She took her book, her masterpiece that she worked on for years, and she got a no. And then she got another no, and then she got another no. Three no's. That would break me, I think. If I took, if I was an author, if I had an article that I wanted to post and for three places told me no, I don't know if I'll carry on. But okay, she carried on. Number four, five, six, and seven. No, 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 no you would definitely think that you're a failure by then if seven companies told you no. But she had the self-confidence to continue. Number eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, no. Somehow she found the strength, the persistence, and the confidence to continue to number 13. And it wasn't until July 26, 1997, when the Sorcerer's Stone hit the shelves, um, and it was an overnight success, right? 
Immediately it became so popular, it was sold for 500 million copies, and I'm not making it up. It, it is the second most popular book after the Bible to be sold around the world. It was translated for over 80 languages, and it is made into eight blockbuster films. Overnight success, she became rich and famous within night. No, not really. <laughs> Another really famous example is Thomas Edison. We all know him because he invented the light bulb, the, the same patent that we use to this day, a hundred years since he made it. The guy invented the light bulb, he invented the phonograph and the motion picture camera. But he's actually responsible for 1,093 patents. We, we haven't heard of any of his 1,090 patents. And it took him 10,000 times, 10,000 trials to perfect the light bulb that we know today. Would you continue 10,000 times with your patent or your invention? How many times is it going to take until you give up? Never. So there's a really famous quote that he says that I love. He says, I have not failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. So as you can understand from this quote, it's really all about perspective and it's all about the way that you embrace that failure and keeping that self-confidence so high that you know what you're worth and you know that eventually you will succeed. And you can extend that to every successful person that you know and admire. My favorite artist is Britney Spears. She didn't become Britney Spears overnight. She, she went through three years of being rejected on auditions. She was like 16. It's a lot in a 16-year-old to go through th three years like that. My, my idol athlete is Michael Phelps because he's a swimmer. I'm a swimmer also. Everybody know him for the guy that um, achieved the most gold medals in an Olympics than any other athletes in the world. But it wasn't like that at first. When he achieved that accomplishment in 2008 in Beijing, it was four years before that in 2004 in uh, Greece when he, he was only one medal short of beating that record by Mark Spitz. So, we haven't heard of his years and years of practice of him being a really awkward kid with hyperactivity, um, being um, bullied and abused. We only hear about his successes. So confidence, as you understood by now, it's not an overnight thing, it's a skill, meaning it can be trained. And it comes with practice, like every other skill, practice, 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 and repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition of the same skill that is called confidence. So many of us will quit after the first bit of failure, the first bit of adversity. But the truth, the truth is that quitting is what defines failure, not the failure itself is what defines failure. And it's a very, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times, but that's really the key for internal confidence in yourself. Because failure is going to come. Hate to break it to you. It's going to come. Sooner or later, at some point in your personal, professional, whatever, you're going to fail. Why? Because nobody can start a skill that they've never done before and to do it perfectly. So what to do? I think it's important to surround yourself with really positive people people that encourage you, people that tell you that you're great and that even if you failed on your face, you need to get up and start again and try again. But most importantly, you need to be positive to yourself. So that means that you have to quit with the negative self-talk. Only positive talk from now on. When you're feeling um, really, really good and confident, I, a lot of people recommended to write a letter to remind yourself again and again that feeling incapable is a temporary. The letter should go something like, Dear Michelle, 
congratulations for graduating with an MBA before the age of 26. Congratulations for finding the right man to marry. Congratulations for being motivated and, um, and excited about finding a job and a career. Congratulations for completing Michelle's Cafe and spreading ideas to other women. So something like that, that is positive and can remind you of all of your successes. I remember um, my sophomore year, I, this is my sixth year in America, and my sophomore year, my second year, I came back uh, from Israel to Michigan, and I had a flight stop in Germany. And I got stuck with a woman who's 45 years old, and she's like a life coach, and she became like a really good friend of mine, although we have like nothing in common. She's like a grandma, and we became good friends. And um, we had like eight hours or so to spend in the Germany airport together. And before we said goodbye, she told me something that really like stuck to me. And I decided that from that moment, I will try to like live by it. She told me, you be, your behavior is like you got a lot of hugs and kisses from your parents growing up. And that made me feel really good because I'm demonstrating that like, that I love myself. And so I can extend that courtesy to others, even strangers. I can feel others feel good or better or special simply by feeling special myself. So I am really lucky to have grown with parents that always told me that I can do whatever I want and always encourage me and tell me that the battle is not over until you win, which is like my life motto that I talk about during clinic number four. Um, but because I had positive people in my life, I can be that positive person for others. So remember to always love and accept yourself. It's really important for self-confidence. And remember that only after you can really feel that positivity inside, you can be that person to others. And you can help others. And you can be that good, useful resource for others. So um, that's it. That's all I have for today. Unless there's any questions, um, feel free to interrupt me. Um, thank you so, so much for taking the time to come to my clinic today. I really hope that you enjoyed and you learned something new. And that's it. Um, if there isn't any other questions, I want to wish you all good night to go out there, be confident, spread positivity, and be happy. Thank you so much.